Good morning, San Francisco, and welcome to day two of the first Dutch virtual trade mission on smart and e-mobility. Yesterday, we had the kickoff of the mission with some interesting participants, uh, policy uh, uh, leaders, Minister Kaag of Foreign Trade and International Development, and of course, the Lieutenant Governor of California, uh, Eleni Kunalakis. And uh, today, you'll all be diving into the topic, into smart and e-mobility. Um, after this, uh, this show, we'll have a couple of webinars that you can follow. And later in this show, I will go uh, through the program with you so you have an idea what's coming up. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. Um, uh, we'll get back to them later in, uh, in Good Morning San Francisco. And if you want to post about this on social media, please do use the hashtag NLUSA, hashtag Digitale Missie, and tag us, the Consulate General in San Francisco, with at NL in S. F. Herbert, how are you after day one of the virtual mission? Well, good morning, Sita. Well, I'm fine. I'm very pleased with the first day, actually. Uh, and to be honest, besides a few technical issues, I think it all went uh, smoothly. And, uh, well, think about it, Sita. We used to have here about 100 guests, and yesterday we had 1,500 viewers. So that's what I call scaling. And um, it's just amazing to really connect entrepreneurs in two time zones on two continents, just in one session. So I was very pleased, and I'm looking forward to today's program. Yeah, so you really see that uh, it's a virtual trade mission, but your audience gets much bigger, and, and we can connect even more people yeah, this way. Yeah, exactly. And that, of course, is a huge opportunity, because I think it gives the opportunity to many more entrepreneurs to join us in this kind of missions, many more than they sort of uh, had in the past, I guess. Uh, we're looking forward, of course, to make the program as interesting as possible. And I think today's program is a very good example because we have, of course, have the hydrogen webinar. And I think it's great that we can all join fourth webinar as well. Um, but Sietse, what do, was your thought here on yesterday's session? No, I, I, I agree. I mean, it's, um, it's been said many times. It was the first time for us. Uh, so uh, for sure, I was a bit nervous. How would it all turn, uh, turn out? We, we did a couple of webinars in the past few months, but that was just us sitting behind a, a, a laptop with a virtual background. And now we have a studio here and we have technicians walking around and we have speakers from all over the world calling in. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different way of doing our work, but it's, it's been a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the, of the week as well. Um, getting back to the topic, um, so the consulate has been quite active on smart and e-mobility already in the past uh, few years. So what are some of the actions that, that the Netherlands has taken here on the West Coast uh, to, to, uh, to connect to California on this topic? Yeah. Indeed, for quite a while, we are active on this topic. Uh, we have a letter of intent signed by Vice Minister Lapeer. He talked about this yesterday. We have, uh, I think, in the making, a mobility week uh, focused on Los Angeles and Seattle. Um, and I think even more, we have a partnership that works. It's a partnership, a public-private partnership, the Coast to Coast uh, Coalition. And they will introduce themselves in a webinar just uh, after this session as well. I think it's interesting because this is a really a partnership between U.S. and Dutch companies, I think for almost eight years now. And we're really seeing there the first fruits of this uh, joint effort of California and the Netherlands. So... Um more than 100 Dutch companies participate in this trade mission uh, and, or uh, sorry, I have to say that correct, more than 100 companies, American and Dutch companies participate in this trade mission. And of those 100, more than 100 companies, 80 are Dutch. Um, from charging infrastructure to the new, to fu futuristic transportation systems, let's take a look at all the companies that are participating. We believe that better moving cities are a better place to live. All these electric vehicles will need a decent charging infrastructure. And that's exactly where Greenbox comes in with its offering. Cycling is essential for smart city transportation. At APPM, we believe that we need to shift to smart and zero emission mobility. We create concrete solutions for today's mobility challenges based on data analysis, forecasts and models.
My name is Jelle, I work for the Holland International Distribution Council and we help foreign companies in setting up their supply chain for Europe. My name is German Passeer, I'm a senior policy advisor to the Netherlands Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. Arch Hyperloop is a leading European company focused on Hyperloop development. Uh, we've proven our key technologies and a low-speed test facility in the Netherlands are building a high-speed uh, cargo-focused test track that will be finished in 2022. We are Technolution. We help our customers designing and building their mission-critical IoT systems. What a great number of companies that we are represented here in this digital trade mission. I would like now to um, ask our friends here in California of Gobis. Uh, California is home to many international businesses and the state actually welcomes with open arms Dutch entrepreneurs. And I'd like to introduce Kaina Pereira. He's the senior advisor for business and international trade at the Governor's Office for Business and Economic Development, Gobis. Mr. Pereira, the floor is yours, and I have a question for you, actually. Um, if the Netherlands entrepreneurs would really like to conquer California, if they want to expand, to enter on the California market, how should they sort of uh, set next steps? What is your sort of best advice here? And good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning, Council General Kunz, and, and thank you very much for inviting me to join you today. I'm really pleased to, to be able to connect with you virtually and also to have the opportunity to speak about this emerging industry. Uh, for California and the world. And I'm really pleased to see the amount of people that you were talking about in previously and having uh, over a thousand viewers. That's quite impressive. Uh, and just thank you for the opportunity. So uh, as, a, as the senior advisor for business development and international trade, the teams that I oversee directly support uh, international and, and subnational companies in setting up operations in the state of California and also expanding their operations therein. So there's three different units that I run. One is the Business Investment Services Unit, which works directly with businesses to help them understand what incentives, credits, services, and opportunities are available within the state, as well as walk them down the path of finding the right and suitable site uh, for them to set up those operations. In addition, I run the Office of Permit Assistance, which will help with any, any size company understand the regulatory framework as well as the permitting requirements uh, for their locations and for their operations. And then finally, uh, I also run the international team, which is your direct connection to GoBiz uh, as a Dutch company. And so they are standing ready to, to set you up with uh, what we call the FBI playbook. And so that's something that walks you through the necessary steps to actually set up a market in California. Uh, so California is the number one zero emission vehicle market in the United States, and we're responsible for nearly 50% of the electric vehicle sales since 2011. Uh, as the Lieutenant Governor mentioned yesterday, uh, California works, as California works to safely recover from the coronavirus pandemic, we see a, a real good opportunity uh, to support and encourage a green recovery. Our leadership in the zero emission vehicle space uh, and the invaluable contributions from our Dutch colleagues and Dutch businesses will be fundamental in, in reaching that economic recovery in a sustainable and, and positive way. It's also important to note that as we recover from the coronavirus, uh, we will do so working to create jobs that are inclusive, sustainable, equitable, and to build ladders of opportunity for Californians who've been locked out of our state's prosperity. So with that, I, I think that the answer to your question is, you know, GoBiz is ready to serve uh, it's ready to serve in any way possible, uh, whether that be connecting you with the resources that you need or really uh, giving you that roadmap or that playbook to be successful. And with that, I'm happy to take any more questions. Of course. Well, thank you so much. And I think the playbook is uh, at our interactive platform. It's available under resources. Um, and perhaps, and you addressed this a bit, where do you see the, uh, major developments and advances in the field of smart and e-mobility in California? 
Well, you know, California is a very inclusive environment, and we welcome foreign investments. It's really critical to our economy. Uh, and these services that we provide, being completely free and being something that we want to engage in international affairs of trade, uh, we want to ingratiate ourselves to the uh, creation of new economies and the creation of new industries, but always through the lens of sustainability and economic and environmental sustainability. Uh, so what we do is we really try and help businesses from concept all the way through to ribbon cutting or opening ceremony. Uh, so small startups may be looking at California market to grow their business. Uh, they can work with our team to understand how to become a California company, what steps are required. And then FDI, uh, you know, starter packet, if you will, or the playbook is something that helps with that. So in conjunction with Emily Desai, who uh, oversees the European market in our office, our foreign direct investment specialist, Maria Ornato, uh, Honorado, sorry, uh, who will be participating in tomorrow's networking session is available to walk businesses through that packet and really to help with any other questions they might have. Uh, we've been able to uh, engage and grow smart mobility here by leveraging uh, the innovative economy that we really is like the touchstone of what California is. And when you think about Silicon Valley, when you think about uh, all the different markets that created new enterprise and created uh, really emerging industries, this is one of those things that we really thrive on. Uh, when speaking on innovation, you know, our team has a, <clears throat> our team has a deep connection with the Los Angeles uh, Clean Tech Incubator or LACI, uh, which is a nonprofit organization that helps promising clean tech uh, companies deliver market ready solutions. Wonderful. There's a number of these other innovation hubs throughout the state. Uh, on incentives, uh, our business investment services team will work with you know your Dutch companies to identify what they might that what might apply for them, and there's a number of specific state policies and incentives that are geared specifically to smart mobility and to alternative transportation. Uh, one, of, one of which is the California Alternative Energy and Advanced Transportation Financing Authority. I know it's a lot of words, but uh, so we call it CAPA. Uh, it offers a full sales and use tax exclusion on the purchase of equipment that enables the production of alternative energy or, all, or advanced transportation. And each year we provide $100 million in uh, sales tax, sales and use tax exclusion through this program. Well, thank you. And it's almost an orange carpet, I would say. And now I would like to reach out to one of the participants in this digital mission. It's Nienke Dane. She's from MID. Uh, and Nienke, I was just wondering, what is the reason for you to join this mission? And perhaps you have a question for Mr. Pereira. Um, and I know you're active on the East Coast. So perhaps you have uh, maybe some experience, but you would maybe like to enter the West Coast. Yeah. So, but perhaps did you enjoy yesterday, and um, why did you join us actually? Yeah, I think yesterday was really an amazing experience. Um, I was really amazed about uh, the program and uh, the way you set it up. I uh, was in Boston on a mission last year, and I it really felt the same to me. So I think you did a great job with the entire team. And like you said, we are already uh, active on the East Coast. We are a, a product development agency. We have offices in the Netherlands, in Germany, but also in Providence, in Rhode Island. And um, we help our clients in developing uh, these new products. And we are very eager to learn more people on the West Coast and explore opportunities there. And that's also my main question to Mr. Pereira is, what would you advise us? So that what would we do best in setting up a business on the West Coast? And what are the main differences in doing business between the East and the West Coast? Well, great question, Mr. Pereira. Well, thank you. And pleased to meet you, Nika. Um, you know, I'd say that the differences between the West and East Coast are pretty interesting in that, uh, for one, we communicate a little bit differently. Uh, so in on the East Coast, generally, people are a little bit more direct. Uh, Business leaders in, in from California, when going to the East Coast in particular, find it to be a little bit more of an aggressive business environment. Whereas on our coast, we're perceived to be a little bit friendlier, maybe uh, you know have a little bit of more of a laid back attitude. Um, but I think that also drives in the fact that we are an innovative spirit. We created things and we consistently create things like the Silicon Valley in particular which is known as a land of innovation and, and creating groundbreaking technology is also one that has vast creativity. And you'll notice that when the operation, the, just the operational differences, right? So we'll have more open environments, we'll have more collaborative and more 
unified thinking, but that also comes in the fact that a lot of the, comp- the people who work for those companies buy in so deeply with the vision and the uh, overall theme of what that company is. And so I would say that that's one of the more stylistic differences. I would also say that, you know, I, I understand that it's easier and closer to be on the, the East Coast for the Netherlands, but when thinking about California in particular, I mean, you're talking about the largest consumer market for electric vehicles, the largest consumer market for alternative transportation, and one that really buys in uh, to this type of environmental change. And so leaving that out of your out of your options is really doing your company a disservice. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Pereira. Thank you so much for your help. I know Gobis is always there to help us out. And Sitsa, back to you. Before I walk you all through the program of today, I have a couple of announcements uh, for all the participants who are on the platform. Um, Please finalize all your matches by tomorrow so we can prepare for your online networking on Thursday. And if you don't have any matches, don't worry. There is a parallel breakout room where you can still meet your fellow participants. Um, And then I want to take a look at the program of today. And so you all know where you have to go for the following webinars. Here it is. Um, So we started with Good Morning San Francisco, followed by the webinars Hydrogen and Mobility. That one will be here on the the live stream in the platform. Uh, It will also be on Facebook Live. After that, uh, or at the same time, there's a a parallel webinar, E-Mobility Developments in California. That will be live streamed through YouTube. You can find the link also in the platform. Um, And we'll close this day with uh, the webinar Consumer Engagement and EV uh, uh, Adoption. And that's a fourth webinar, so you can follow that webinar through the fourth convention, online convention. So thank you for now. Um, Good to have you again here with us on the second day of the virtual trade mission. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.